everyone, how's it going? It's the Fuzz! So, the first custom card contest has concluded. I've looked through all the cards, and man, I was pretty impressed for the most part. Really good stuff, really nice art, really nice everything. So, what is a good card for me? What I was looking for is mostly cards that you could show me. I could look at this card and say, yeah. That's that's a card developers just made. Yeah, I'm on board. Like, if you could fool me into believing that this card was legitimately just released by the developers, you get points for that. Also, generally, I prefer, like, actual cards. Fun cards are great and all, but really, unless they really make me laugh, which a few did, um, I generally don't look at those very much. So, let's get going. I do have one favorite of all that... I'm going to mention at the very end. Otherwise, they're they're going to be in kind of like a random order. But the one that I mentioned at the very end is going to be the, my favorite and the winner of the contest. And wow, I was, I was just, I wanted that card to be in the game so badly because I thought it was just so awesome. It just hit all the right notes. Anyways, let's get going. I'm going to start off pretty simple with a Convicted Soldier. Uh, this card by itself isn't all that exciting, but what is interesting is the mana cost. It's a 3 aspect 1 mana card, which we don't have in the game. So I think it's a great idea to introduce a few cards like this. The closest thing we do have is the uh, chicken, where you kind of want to play it for 1 mana with a lot of aspects. But the chicken, you can just play for 1 mana. And then later you can get a lot of aspects. This this card specifically requires you know a lot of aspects, target for and still etc. The card itself, eh, it's just okay. But I think the idea that Marcus, the person who created this, he's onto he's onto something with the uh, interesting new mana cost. We've got a second card from Marcus, Warband. So this one, when it comes into play, puts a militia under it and it gets a buff. That's a pretty cool idea. It's like a reverse Gurky Tribe Mystic, a Gurky Tribe Shaman, where y the card puts other things under it to make itself stronger in some way. The only other mechanic we've seen like that is the Primordial Trayant, but that card never really took off. So I think that's a pretty cool idea. And Warband is a fairly reasonable start into that kind of design. And it's a nice buff to soldiers. Yeah, cool. Moving on, we've got the Elder Violet Dragon. So, this one was submitted by Yin Vaser. I hope I'm pronouncing the name right. Now, he he created several of these dragons, one for each aspect. But rather than go over all of them, I just picked my favorite. And this is my favorite of the bunch. So, they're, the idea is the same. They're all four mana, four aspects, you know, of their respective aspects. Five, five with three speed with flying and some badass ability and i chose this one because uh first of all it's a slave it's a slave dragon but the effect is just so cool so every slave can sack itself for three mana and if it does you can steal an enemy creature and that thing becomes a slave so is it overpowered maybe a little bit but man it's just a terrifying dragon just like red dragon when a red dragon is played against you you're pissing your pants because you know if you can't remove it, you're going to lose very soon. So with this card, it's very similar. Where this guy can just clear the board up pretty nicely. You do have to have a lot of mana, but hey. It's a pretty awesome card. And ha every aspect having a big badass dragon. Yeah. I like that. Alright. Moving on. Mana Storm is an interesting card because it's... It's the card where you can kind of dis decide how powerful it is. So first of all, it costs zero mana, but you can spend any amount of mana. And it deals X damage to Y creatures. And X is the amount of mana you spent. Half, round it up. And then Y is equal to your level. So it's a board clear, right? But it's a board clear that takes some time to develop. So you deal damage equal to your mana divided by two, but it's rounded up. So if you, if you spend three mana, you'll do two damage. If you spend 5 mana, you'll do 3 damage, and then to number of creatures up to your level. So if you have 2 levels, and you spend 5 mana, it's like 3 damage to 2 things. It's pretty cool. Obviously, later on, it could literally clear the clear the board. It's a pretty cool idea, and I like this because it gives blue, like a legitimate, powerful board clear. You know, Snowstorm is not the best card, even, even with the buffs, but this card, if you invest a lot of mana... It could basically be like a cataclysm. If you spend like 7 mana and you have 4 aspects, you could hit 4 creatures for 4 damage. Pretty powerful. 
Anyways, moving on. And now, here is the card which I would say is my second favorite. By Vitamin C, the Flux Protector. So, the reason this card is so cool is because the way it's costed, it is exactly one above the Steel Sentient. So, you could use the Renovation Facility to transform the Steel Sentient into this. And it, it's got, it's oozing flavor all over the place. So you can sack an artifact and put a shield emblem on an automaton, which is any of the artifact creatures except the ship, I think. And if once you have four aspects, if that automaton would be destroyed by an effect, remove a shield and it's not destroyed. So it's really, it's like a really cool boss creature for the artifact archetype. So it could protect it from Dragonfire, for instance, which I think is pretty important. Because otherwise, the artifact creature archetype is always going to be vulnerable to artifact removal because it can hit their creatures as well. Like, any kind of artifact removal you run is, like, r extra punishing. But with this guy, you have a way around it. It's a big body as well, and you can protect itself. You can protect other guys. Really nicely done. Really great art. I don't know where it's from, but it fits perfectly. And you could, li you could show me this card and say, hey, Ifco just spoiled the card. And I'd say, wow, yeah. Pretty cool. I would never even suspect that this was a custom card. Well done. Our next card, we've got Alicia Nightseeker. So this one is a 3 mana 2 aspect dual color. It's an elf, ranged, 4 speed, cannot play it unless you have another elf, and you cannot target her unless she is... Oh, it says... While she's ready, she can be targeted. That means that as long as she's not exhausted, you know, after attacking, or if she's shocked, uh, you can't target her. So, obviously a very dangerous card. I'm not sure about the 4 speed, because 4 speed and ranged is a little bit scary, especially for a creature that can't be targeted. But I just like the idea. It's, you know, it's got the two colors that has the elves. It's obviously a very powerful elf to encourage you to play elves. And, yeah, it just seems to fit really well. Maybe slightly too good. Probably should be 4 mana because you could Kayana her otherwise. And that'd be a 4-3 with ranged. With 4 speed that can't be targeted. Yeah. That <laughs> might be a little bit too much. So make it 4 mana and we'll see where we are. But a cool, uh, cool flavor. Also excellent art. Uh, speaking of that, Dark Silver, who made this card, has another one for us. Here we've got the Tanya Snow Rider. So... This card might not look like much, but for whatever reason, I just find it so adorable. It must be the, the big white cat. The card itself is pretty straightforward. It's probably OP because it's got a giant stat line. But it costs double green, and it searches for primary nature shrine. So, rewards you for playing mono nature. Probably could even cost three nature, honestly. And I think it'd be worth it because you can just keep searching for shrines. It's just basically equivalent to drawing cards. And it's got a really strong stat line. So, simple... But effective. Good job, Mr. Dark Silver. Moving on. We've got uh, Burke's Messenger from Wallows. So, 4 mana, 2 aspects. Comes right after Forced Labor. 2-5, two, 2 speed. When it comes into play, deals 1 damage to all your creatures. And then your creatures that are damaged get plus 1 attack for each damage taken. So, fits perfectly into the uh, Forced Labor that comes right on curve. You can play him after you've played Forced Labor. Activate all of the orcs and they get extra attack. The reason I like this card is because it gives that archetype a little bit more support, which they're lacking a little bit right now. With this guy, it's not only another activator, but also he could just stay on the board, and if at any point you play Blood Frenzy, you can basically buff your board because you can just damage your guys, damage the enemy guys because, you know, Blood Frenzy works that way, and then you get a plus one attack. So, seems pretty cool. I'd say maybe give him a 3-5 stat line. Yeah, why not? Cool card. Nice job, Mr. Uh, Wallos. We got a um, Angered Bird over here by Zik... What is that? Zikrich? I'm sorry. I, that's a really tough name. So, seems like a pretty simple card. When it comes into play, deals 3 damage. But I love it. Do you know why? Because it gives nature removal. Straight up simple removal. Its card kind of reminds me of Haldiri Rider. Because it does 3 damage when it comes in, just like Haldiri, and doesn't die like Haldiri generally didn't. Now, that said, this card is probably OP, because 4 speed is a bit much. I would just make it like a 3 speed 2-1 with this effect, and I think it'd be fine. You'd be able to, you know, develop a 3 speed body on the board while possibly removing an enemy creature. 
I think that'd be fair, um, fair card. And again, it gives nature like actual removal, which they don't do not have, other than what earthquake, Elgaron. Give me a break. I mean, real, real removal. Okay, Elgaron is cool, but you can't control it. So yeah, very simple card, but effective. Now we also have a second card from this gentleman, Mister Fangvar. So. 3-3 three, three flying, whenever a non-summoned creature dies, summon a raven for one mana. So it's the same soul raven that Corona summoned. So basically, it's like a flesh sculptor. But it's kind of like a fair flesh sculptor because it's more expensive. But also you have to pay one mana to summon these soul ravens. Now, soul ravens are probably a lot more powerful than zombie legionnaire, especially considering what Coronas can do. But I think this card just fits perfectly. Yeah, you could probably only run it with Coronas, but hey... Who cares? Now, it doesn't say it, but this card probably should be legendary. I mean, it's got a name, so it's probably legendary. And, yeah, with four aspects, Ravens get three speed. And this guy gets three speed. Really cool card. And, again, looks... You could show this to me, and I'd probably believe that it's a real card. Although, I think I've seen this card art in Magic somewhere. I don't... I'm sure I have. I just don't know what card it was. But, yeah, really nice. Next up, Ryan has Scatador Power Mage for us. So, we've seen Scatador's bidding, and Scatador himself was featured on the flavor text of this card, that is, Word of Power. So this card, pretty simple, gains energy and converts energy into Might Emblems. Why do I like it? Because it gives you something to do with your mana that's not playing cards from hand. It, it's like an ability that lets you convert spare mana into something good. You know who could always convert some spare mana into something good? Yeah, Basic Vespina. But a lot of the time... Other decks would probably like to do this. Now, it kind of sucks that he's in Dominion because Dominion has all these other good cards. But it is kind of fitting, I guess. But still, I like him because it's like a powerful control card that can just generate a lot of value by itself. It might be a little OP. And actually, this kind of card probably should only be usable in, um, like, not during combat. Because if you could do this during combat... I mean, Force Mage Protector is already annoying as hell, right? When your opponent can shield whatever they want. Being able to bump whatever you want, because you can just store up energy with this guy. Being able to bump up whatever you want, like, you could just... You could make blocking and defending just completely impossible. So I think Mr. Scatador should have the uh, caveat of use his power, you know, the, the, the Might Emblem thing. Like, use it only during your main phase. Because it, being able to use this during combat or at any time, that might be a little bit lame. But, really cool card. Next up, Mr. Ryan has Longshot Ambush. It doesn't seem like a very interesting card. I mean, just deal 2 damage to a creature. Instant. You're right. But, it's removal for nature. It's a basic removal card, which I think we could use more of. Yes, we have a lot of them in some aspects and not much in others. Nature, I think, is the one last aspect that just is just desperately lacking removal. And between this and that angry bird thing, that could be just what they need. Now, I'm not sure if two mana is appropriate. It seems a little weak. At one mana, it might be slightly too good because it'd be the same cost as Outbreak. Although, I suppose it's not necessarily more powerful than Outbreak. You could make it a one mana and see if it's too much between this Outbreak and Ambush Strike. It might be. But nonetheless, I'd like to see a card like this in the game. Because it would give nature a bit more options. Like, if they'd be able to remove a Flesh Sculptor, right? Finally. <laughs> Instead of just being stuck with it. Or hoping for Ambush Strike. Or, I mean, Tornado Outbreak. So, cool card. Yeah. Counter Revolution. <laughs> Undo a recent balance change. <laughs> what I really like about this is the flavor text. When you learn to survive as many nerfs as I have, we will talk. Maeva the Revered. <laughs> Maeva the Revered is a hero that has been nerfed many times already. I think like four or five times. And she's still playable. She has stood the test of time. Truly. Truly an amazing hero. So yeah, it's obviously a funzy card. But I included it because it made me laugh. Well done, Type 100. <laughs> Next up, we got this Inostensible Larvae. Now, the card itself... Don't pay much attention to it, but the idea behind it is what I really like. Basically, you play this, and it's terrible, but then it gets stronger, and then after some time, it evolves and becomes something really awesome. So I think it's actually a really cool idea. 
it's like an investment you start off really early with this it's probably kind of terrible i mean two two with one speed is awful but after a few turns it becomes amazing now the card here that uh was it ravenir oh sorry ravenir these these cards don't get no respect the ravenir showed as the eater of worlds i actually don't think it's that powerful it's not powerful enough to warrant running this you would honestly just pay one more mana and just run this card instead of like trying to evolve this i think if you're gonna spend that much time and energy trying to evolve something the thing you evolve into should be badass but hey i like the idea we got devourer's touch here so this is like a similar card to mantle of the winds where you attach it if the creature dies it, you get the card back this one gives the creature unstoppable and it causes it to deal damage in the form of decaying cards just like azuris and the other cards that's pretty cool i think it's really fitting as well even though i'm not even sure this would be played and constructed but it would give you a little bit more options if you want to build a mill deck also would be a nice card in trials actually that's where these kinds of cards shine the most and you know devourer touch unstoppable especially and if you can mill some cards cool idea yeah i mean <laughs> the art probably could be a little bit better but hey that's fine we appreciate the idea i like cookies as a good idea we got um wisdom dominion control <laughs> cannot be nerfed if your opponent has more creatures on the board at the start of your turn add one of these cards to your hand it costs zero cataclysm or scatterer's bidding man it sure you know it's supposed to be a joke card but you could swear that it's like real <laughs> Because Cataclysm and Scatterer's Bidding are the kinds of cards that tend to ruin your day when you're trying to kill these guys. So, yeah. <laughs> Pretty good joke. Really fun. Yeah, definitely I agree that it seems like this deck just never goes away. I'm not sure how you could really nerf it because you'd have to go after New Horizons and you'd have to go after, like, Cataclysm itself. But yeah otherwise wisdom and dominion just has so many good cards put together they're always going to be able to make a deck you know we, we took care of vamp lamp they're still around we nerfed scatterer's bidding it's still around yeah i guess they just cannot be nerfed too powerful we got fire nor skull so the, the reason i put this card here is because it's a choose card and i think we could really use more of those the closest card this this reminds me of is power discharge which is an excellent card because it's very flexible the same idea as with this one give nature a cool card like that now this one i feel is kind of unfinished the first effect summon silver fang that's pretty cool but the second effect has to do with wolves we don't have any wolves in the game and i'm not sure wolves are really like a worthy idea of pursuing even though wolf tongue himself benefits them because i mean wolf tongue is plenty powerful as it is so if you add more wolves he'd just become more and more powerful um uh, we have a wolf here uh, yeah, that's an okay card, but again, I just don't think wolves themselves are an archetype we really need to concern ourselves with. But otherwise, just yeah, keep the card and just add a different, uh, some different uh, abilities here. Maybe like put a might emblem on a friendly creature, or maybe add a some, maybe add an instant spell from your deck to your hand. It's something cool like that. That would give uh, give the card some interesting flavor, and we'll make it a flexible card, just like Power Discharge. So, pretty cool stuff. We got Forsaken Ground, a multicolor shrine. So you need to have Dominion and Corruption, but you only gain the Dominion level if you play it. So obviously it's not both. So the effect is pretty powerful. It's basically draw a card for two life, and you get to put some creatures back into your deck. I like it because it's obviously very powerful, but it's very restrictive. You have to be running specifically this color combo. Now, I don't think if we're going to be making multicolored shrines... I don't necessarily think we need to have every single color combination. Like, we don't have to have, like, you know, Dominion Rage, Dominion Wisdom, Dominion Order. I just think we need a few. I think maybe sticking to just the evil and good works. So, like, you know, Corruption, Dominion, Corruption, Rage, Dominion, Rage. And then the good guys would be all that we need. And this one, pretty good example. Maybe a little bit too good. Maybe not. But, I, again, I like the idea of having these kind of shrines, so... Uh, points to Mr. Oh, it's the same guy who made that one. Why is Chaos? Sorry, no respect for your other card. And last card we have from this gentleman, 
Brock or the Cursed, a multicolor hero. So going with the same theme. This guy's a little too specific, I think, working just with curses. You know, heroes like that, like that tend to be awful in anything but constructed, as is the case with this one. There's just not enough curses, really, to make this work. But I can appreciate the idea of trying to make a multicolor hero with a unique effect. And yeah, this one's pretty interesting. Good start. We just need to be, uh, find a better theme. We've got Graveyard Ritual. It's a pretty cool idea. Discards too, but lets you reuse any card from your graveyard putting into your hand. I think four mana is probably too much for this. You could probably just cost two, to be honest, because you are discarding two cards. But the point is, it gives you some interesting options because you could discard garbage, like reanimate decks tend to do anyways, and just reuse the one specific cards. Like you were pretty happy to play Eleanor just to get a reanimate back as a spell. With this, you have a more convenient way to do it. You could just play this, discard like a Bezerok and something useless, get a reanimate, and just play re play reanimate. So it would fit right into the reanimate deck, which is pretty awesome. And I think even without reanimate decks, you could probably just find some use for it because the flexibility of being able to, to, to use any card from your graveyard would be nice. And it, But again, it probably shouldn't cost 4 mana. I think it's just too much. Make it cost 2 mana, and I think it's a pretty solid card. We got the Doge here. That's adorable. Yeah. <laughs> what can I say? Anyways, this leaves us with just one other card that I mentioned. My favorite card that really just blew me away. And uh, I think it's a great, uh, great idea for the future. Are you ready? Poseidon, Lord of the Seas. So... Submitted by Mr. Vekros. Now, just like with the big dragons, Vekros submitted several of these god cards, if you will. But I chose Poseidon as the representative because I think he's by far the coolest. So, the idea with these cards is it's a giant creature, you know, 5 mana, 4 aspect, Bezerok level, with ridiculous effects. And man, just look at this guy. Comes into play, gets you a power discharge, that's already good. Uses the uses energy to freeze creatures and can distribute damage to remove them. Just such an epic boss monster that you know wisdom never really had. You know, crab is you know fun at all, but it's not that great. This guy just pure badassery. It hits every note. Great art. Really looks just perfect. Like I want to see this card in the next balance patch. Can we? Can we make it happen? Can we see it? Probably not. Okay, but yeah. Now, this card does bring up something interesting, and that is reanimate makes cards like these a little bit not good because you, obviously reanimating something like this is just unfair, right? It's simply unfair to reanimate a creature this big with such effects. So with the god tag that you can see on the bottom here, I think it could also be a keyword that says when this creature dies... It doesn't go to the graveyard, it like goes back to your deck, or it just gets removed from the game. Basically, it needs some mechanic that prevents it from being reanimated, because that just, that's just obscene. Like, can you imagine reanimating something like this? I mean, Bezerok is about as powerful as you can really reanimate without being too OP. This dude, you get a free power discharge, and if you have enough mana, it can literally just clear the enemy board. Like, Bezerok tries to clear the board, this dude just clears the board. You need probably a couple points of mana, but man. <laughs> Anyways, I just fell in love with this card because it's just such an awesome boss monster that you, you just want to slam down and just rock your opponent's world. And this guy rocked my world. So, Vecross, well done. You are the winner of the contest in my eyes because you made the card that it just made me... It just filled me with hope and inspiration that we can, we can create such awesome cards in the game. And this is one of them. I want to see Poseidon in the game. And just for the sake of completion, there's a few others that Vecross made. That this one's dual colored. This one has really awesome art. Just the effect is not very practical, <laughs> sadly. And then you got a dual colored one. This one actually is interesting because it has that you have to pay something at the end of every turn. So it's kind of like the murderous chieftain, but you have to do it every turn. But it's obviously a very powerful card. So the idea is pretty simple: big giant card, you know, awesome effects. It's a god, can't be reanimated. No, you can reanimate it. Give it to every aspect. And, yeah. 
Let's make it happen, developers. I know you guys got a lot to do, but I think the community has showed you what can happen. And man, I was impressed. So, well done. I guess I can't really make this a thumbnail. Oh, actually, I could. Well, it would kind of spoil it, but you know what? I don't care. This card is so epic. <laughs> yeah, well done, Vecross. Uh, congratulations to everyone. The cards have been really cool. If I didn't mention your card, that doesn't mean I thought it was awful. It just didn't... It just wasn't new enough to warrant bringing up... There were, there were some cards that seemed like just either better or worse version than existing cards. So, you know, not very earth-shaking. But hey, there weren't any cards which I thought were just straight-up awful. There were some slightly quirky ones... But that's okay. We can appreciate a little bit of quirk. So thanks for watching. Stay awesome. And I'll see you next time.